So the last few videos have all looked at what we call carrier synchronization, techniques for generating a cosine whose phase perfectly tracks or is coherent with the reference phase. Let's now look at something that we call symbol synchronization, basically the fact that in a digital communication system, we need to know when symbols start and stop so we can do our correlation and integration and things like that correctly. So knowing when symbols start and stop is what we refer to as symbol synchronization. Again, depending on exactly what scheme that you're working with, there are lots of different techniques that you can use to do this. We're only gonna look at one specific approach here. It's gonna be for the special case of baseband signals with rectangular pulses. And we're gonna look at what we call a late gate, early gate technique. If you go look you know, at other digital communication textbooks and Wikipedia and things like that, again, lots of ways that you can go about doing this, but this is um, what I think is one of the more intuitive ways and one of the simpler ways that you can do it. So here is the structure that we are going to work with. There's a received signal that comes in, and then we basically process that received signal down two independent paths. This top path is what we call kind of the early branch, and here's what we call the late branch. And look what happens on each one of those paths. First of all, we mix with a symbol. So whatever symbol's coming in, we're gonna mix with that shape. In this particular case, we've restricted it to being rectangular pulses. So this symbol generator here is generating those rectangular pulses. However, I'm gonna mix it with either an early version or a late version. So I'm gonna shift in time by some delta one way or the other. And then I'm gonna do my multiplication I'll then integrate, sample, and then take the magnitude. So at the output right here, I have a single number, and at the output here, similarly, I have a single number. Those two numbers are going to get subtracted from each other, and then that difference is what drives what we call the VCC, voltage controlled clock. Again, really, if we want to do our job kind of completely, we should dive into the contents of this box and describe exactly how voltages change the behavior of the clock. We're not going to go to that level. It's sufficient for us to understand just the top level behavior of a VCC, and that's based on the voltage that comes in, this clock adjusts its timing. For example, right now we're going to assume that this clock is putting out a trigger every capital T seconds, so we generate a rectangular pulse every capital T seconds. When the input is zero, it will keep putting out the clock right aligned every capital T. However, depending on this input, if it goes up positive or down negative, the VCC will start delaying just a little bit. So it's gonna keep putting things out every capital T, but it's gonna slowly shift where it starts putting those out in time. What that's gonna allow us to do is get synchronized with the starting location of the input pulse. As this error signal goes up and down, this will make the adjustment to shift where in time it's triggering to get our sim symbols synchronized with the input symbol stream. So that's kind of the overall goal of this architecture. Let's now go ahead and walk through in detail the exact math of these different paths to see how do we end up getting a error signal here that has the desired properties. All right, so here we go. Synchronizer analysis, and let me kind of restate some of these assumptions again. We're gonna assume that the symbols in our system right now are just binary, so two different types of symbols, and they're gonna be plus PT of T and minus PT of T, so a positive rectangular pulse or a negative rectangular pulse. And for now, let's go ahead and assume that we're perfectly synchronized. You can be asking, why in the world are we gonna assume synchronized? The whole point is to get synchronized when you're not. Well, first we'll do it when we're perfectly synchronized to see the behavior of this architecture, and then we'll do the same analysis again when we are off some amount and see how we change the error signal that drives the VCC. So here is what's gonna happen on the early path. The early path, as we noted, is gonna start plus delta too early. And the output of the integrator is gonna be the following. So we're gonna integrate from zero to T, the input pulse. The input pulse is coming in as a positive rectangle, as I've written it right here. 
and we're going to assume that we're perfectly synchronized, meaning I know exactly where zero is. So this right here is the picture that we've been drawing all semester. It's the picture assuming that we're perfectly synchronized. However, the top early path is going to start a little bit too early. So we're going to start integrating delta too early on purpose. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do on that top integration path. These two things get mixed together and multiplied, and then I get integrated. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply. So what is the product of these two things? So this rectangle times that rectangle leaves me with this rectangle. And this is what gets integrated from 0 to capital T. However, there's only area up to T minus delta. So at the output of the integral, I end up with an integrator output that behaves like this versus time. It starts ramping up linearly, and then when we kind of fall off the back edge there, it holds its value. And then finally, that dot right there is what I grab at time t at the output of my integration. What is that value? That value right there is t minus delta. So when I'm perfectly synchronized, on the early path, the number I get at the output of my integration is t minus delta. Let's do a very similar analysis on the late path. It's going to start delta too late. So my input rectangular pulse comes in. I'm perfectly synchronized with it. But I'm going to purposefully start a little too late in time. I'm still going to integrate for a duration of capital T, though. So this is how I'm going to integrate this quantity. So that product ends up being this rectangular shape right here. It's going to start at delta and stop at t. This is now what gets integrated in my integrator. So my integrator is going to slowly ramp up, although note that it initially there's nothing to integrate. So when it starts integrating, it's 0, 0, 0, and then eventually it starts ramping up linearly, and then it ends up at the value t minus delta again, because the area of this rectangle is t minus delta is the base, 1 is the height, so I get a value of t minus delta. So at the end of integration, that's what I get. So let's think about what is now input into the difference here. Remember, the last thing that we do before going into the VCC is take the top path minus the bottom path. So here, the top path, I had a value of t minus delta, and I'm going to subtract off t minus delta, the value I had on the bottom path, and I get an output of 0. And that is the input to the VCC. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. The VCC is going to start adjusting where it's sending out its trigger signal based on the input. If the input is 0, that tells the VCC, everything's good, don't do anything. So that's exactly what we want to have happen. All right, so that was the perfectly synchronized analysis. Let's do the same thing now, but assume that we're not synchronized. So there's really two cases. We need to analyze being late by some amount and being early by some amount. We're not going to do that. We're just going to do one of them, and you can kind of get the pattern and see how it'll work out. But for now, we're going to assume that we're late by some amount epsilon. So we're just a little bit off of perfectly triggering. For now, let's go ahead and assume that epsilon also is, you know, smaller than the width delta. So we're within a sampling time of, of uh, delta, but, you know, just a little bit off. All right. So let's go ahead and do the analysis. So now what comes into our system is a rectangular pulse still, but we're no longer perfectly aligned. We're off just a little bit delta in that direction. So what came in is still width capital T, just off by epsilon. So now on that top path, on the early path, I'm still going to mix with the exact same thing I mixed with before. I purposefully am off by delta. When I multiply these two things together, I'm going to get a slightly different looking rectangular shape. Multiplying these two things together, I'm going to have a zero for the first epsilon of that product. And then I'm going to end at whichever of these edges ends first. So the thing that ends first is t minus delta. That's the smallest of those numbers. t minus delta is less than t plus epsilon. So I'm going to start right, stop right there at t minus ep delta. And now this is what gets integrated, and I grab the last value at the output of my integrator. So instead of sketching that, I'm just going to shade in that area. That area is t minus delta minus epsilon, because it's just the base width times 1. So that's what I get on the early path. 
what about the late path? So on the late path, I purposely am integrating delta late. So this is what I mix with that. So when I multiply those two things together, what do I end up with? Well, delta is bigger than epsilon. So the first edge is gonna start at delta. And then I'm gonna to go to whichever of these edges is the smallest. The smallest is T plus epsilon because of our assumption here. So this is the rectangle that I'm integrating at my integrator. What is that area? Well, it's the front edge minus the back edge, which is T plus epsilon minus delta. So that's what I get in my late path. These two things get subtracted as input to the VCC. So if I take my early gate minus my late gate, I get T minus delta minus epsilon, subtract off this, and you can see what happens. Lots of these quantities cancel out. The T's cancel, the minus delta's cancel, but I'm left with minus two epsilon. So that's interesting. When I am off by epsilon, the input to my VCC is proportional to epsilon. So the input to the VCC is gonna be off in an amount that's proportional to how much I need to make the adjustment. And that's exactly what I want to have happen. I'm always trying to get some error signal that is proportional to how much I'm off so my system can make the adjustment in the proper direction and in the proper amount. The more epsilon I'm off, the bigger that error signal will be. This analysis here was just for being late by epsilon. Obviously, we could do similar analysis for early, and you'd end up with a very similar answer. We'll end up with the uh, amount being proportional to epsilon. You could also do the analysis for, for an input pulse that's negative as well, right? Everything I've drawn here assumed the input pulse was positive. What about when there's a negative pulse? Very similar things. Your sketches are all going to look a little bit different. All the areas you're going to end up with are going to be negative. But then remember, one of the blocks in our system after you do the integration is you take the magnitude. So even though you might end up with a negative value for your integration, we then take the magnitude and then we're going to be back to positive values here again anyway. All right, so that is the end of this little topic. We have looked at one way that you can perform symbol synchronization with what's called an early gate, late gate technique. And that allowed us to get an error signal that was proportional to how unsynchronized we were. And that allows us to control our voltage controlled clock to make the adjustment on when those triggers are firing. In the next video, we need to look at the next level of synchronization. This right here is what we call symbol synchronization. We need to move to kind of a higher level, what we call frame synchronization. Most digital communication schemes are going to pack up data into frames of data, and being able to keep track of when a frame of data starts is also important as well. So watch the next video for frame synchronization.